Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Rhode Island Podcast. I'm your host, Devin Decker, and joining me, my host companion, Sejun Sarawick. Sejun? Uh, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. I think I might be in the wrong room. What, what are we doing? <laughs> oh, I, I did. I did. I don't know uh, if you heard or not, but we're just referring to things as what they are now in 2020. Oh. Take, for example, the fact that the Washington Redskins are now the Washington football team. <laughs> Not even like footballers, like Washington nope. football team. We are the Washington football team. Washington football team. So I thought that we should get into the spirit. So I decided that we're going to change our name, even though it wasn't embroiled in racial issues, like socio-political issues, to the Rhode Island podcast. Now I know that you probably have an issue with that, being as you're not in Rhode Island, but you're from Rhode Island, so it kind of works. <laughs> I am uh, I I am intrigued by this change, Devin, uh, more so than I am by the name the Washington Football Team. Um, that's like a poke in the eye to somebody, right? Like 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 there's no there's no doubt that that is something that is somebody in a room that's pissed off that they had a change of name and they think that they're being snarky, right? Like this doesn't feel like this was a decision made for good business or for fans this feels like this was a this was a decision made to basically like like oh, i'm going to show you how stupid your whole upsetness was right it is a poke in the eye most egregious to the american public because the reason that washington football team gave for not having a proper team name is that they want to give it a season before they, they, they pick a new team name. They don't want to rush into anything. So what it says is that there are people in Washington who are capable of waiting to make an important decision. Unfortunately, none of them are in politics. Uh, very, very good. Oh, man. So... I, I, I yeah, it just, it feels <laughs> weird. Um... You know what though? I, like, uh, the the do we worst. Know anything about fan reaction to it? Like, I all I know is I bought a shirt last night because it feels like something in a movie. It feels like oh, we're set in Washington, but the NFL won't play ball. Uh, let's write on the shirts Washington Football Team, and we can say that he's a fan of Washington. Yeah, it feels like something in like a, a bad sitcom is what it feels like. It's not even a movie because at least a movie would have the the balls to come up with like you know like an animal, <laughs> the Washington Billy Goats. Why like not something. the Washington Sentinels from the replacements? <laughs> then you retroactively have a movie that can that can act as like tie in to the freaking thing. And Keanu Reeves is there. And Keanu Reeves, his his level of like personal exposure to the entire world has never been higher he's breathtaking we're all breathtaking we're the washington sentinels also also in that isn't carrie and moss also in the the replacements no Am I wrong about that no it's not carrie and moss it is who is the a carrie and moss clone you know if you want to buy into that whole belief that hollywood is nothing but families i couldn't tell you her name I, as far as I know, it's the only movie that she has ever been in. Okay. Yeah, in my head, it's, uh, uh is it, oh, Brooke Langdon? It <laughs> is, it's Brooke it Langdon. Yeah, I can't uh, think of another okay. thing that Brooke Langdon did. Maybe, like, some hosting no, gigs? Oh, okay. She's in the net. Oh, no, wait, that's the, the series, The Net, <laughs> from 1998 to 99. Oh, that series um, that not even I, I fan I of The Net, God, watched? I thought that, like, The Replacements, I must have inserted Carrie Ann Moss in there, because in my head, The Replacements was just one of the many programs that Neo goes through in The Matrix to learn, uh, like, superpowers. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that is what that movie is to me. What The Replacements is, is, is a Gene Hackman movie, first and foremost. It is such a riff on Hoosiers... To this, like, disgusting level that, like, re-watching Hoosiers this year, having just watched The Replacements last year, uh, at the end when Jimmy's like, I want the ball coach, and the whole team's like, yeah, Jimmy should get the ball coach, and it's like, well, obviously, in basketball, you want to give the ball to your best player. Um, you know, it's, it's strange that you guys would think otherwise when it's the championship on the line. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but in I, the Man, I am, like... 
why did they not go with this team? Now that I'm looking, thinking about this movie again, like it's, this is so good. We're talking about a movie that had fucking Rice Ivins in it, John Favreau, Orlando Jones, like what a rare sighting of Orlando Jones. <laughs> not so rare for the time, but now, yes, that was when he nowadays. I, does Orlando Jones still work? That's a uh, real question I'm asking. <laughs> I, I, isn't he like a higher up at Sprite now? Didn't they like give him a? <laughs> to, to no, that was the, that was up? the Verizon guy. He now works oh, for Sprint. Right. I, yeah, Common no, I... misconception. Um, but yeah, it's just strange. Like the Sentinels and the co- the world collectively lost their shit this year for the anniversary of the replacements in a way that I had never seen before. Like I'm a huge fan of that movie because I had a VHS of it that I got it for like a dollar at a Walmart, probably in the Berkshires, like just to fill out the story details. And it's one of those situations, we would watch it all the time. And I never really had a conversation with anybody about the replacements. And then this year, the world collectively losing their minds over the replacements anniversary. And I think it was like the 22nd anniversary. Like it wasn't even like a round number. When did it come mm. out? I, I imagine you're on IMDb if you're pulling out Brooke Langdon's name. Uh, it is a uh, it is a 2000 film, my okay, brother. So it is 2020. a 20 year anniversary. Yeah. Okay. Well, then you know maybe we'll have to watch year. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was one. Oh, that's why. Because I'm like, oh, maybe we should watch the replacements. But like, no, Bring It On needs to be watched. And I'm so glad that we watched Bring It On on this the Rhode Island podcast. All right, that joke's gone on long enough. We're seven minutes into the episode. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Say Report. It's always been the Say Report. Is it the Say hey, Report? Hold. You it fucking blew my mind. <laughs> All right. But because it's just so ridiculous that... And here's the thing. Like, it was around last week, but with all the other pomp and circumstance, I lost it. So when I was watching football, and it just said Washington with a goofy W on the screen as, like, upcoming games at 4 o'clock, I thought that maybe, like, someone just used the wrong Washington, like, icon when they were yeah. putting together the the but layout, like the fucking stand-in name, because that's what they, they, I mean. It looks like it is like somebody was wrote that down and thought we'll get to that later, and then never got back to it. It is the law a note to follow so of professional football. <laughs> it makes no sense to me at all. But I bought a shirt, and I bought a shirt because sixty dollars shirt marked down to twenty dollars. And free shipping was available last night only from NFLshop.com. You know why you buy a shirt? You like you are you gonna be fucking rolling in it in twenty years when because uh, according to the supposed story that this is just them sitting on it while they take a year to think about it. That means that this is only gonna be this will be the only season that they ever play as as the Washington Football Team. It is, they are going to go down in history. This is like, like this is going to be the season to buy as much merch as possible from them. It's actually like a fucking on a weird business move. Also, kind of genius as much as it is gross because there's this idea that like this is going to be the year when nobody's nobody's watching f- football in the stands. So like like buy up as much merch online as you can. Like like and go out and me. buy. Yeah, right. I have to admit it, they got it. And that's because have, are you familiar with the Steagles? Do you know who the Steagles are? I mean, like, like Stiegler, isn't that like a like a country rock star? I, I don't know. I have no idea. Who <laughs> That's a good Stiegel name for a country rock star. And if we ever write a movie that features a country rock star, I promise you that's going to be his name. He's going to be Stiegel. And hopefully Sean William Scott will play him. Because I could see him doing, like, some sort of crazy, old-timey country music star. And I think it'd be pretty great. No, it's just gonna be a Star is Born, and the Rock will end up playing the Lady Gaga role. That's but fantastic. anyway, I will um... watch it. <laughs> and no, blow me fucking away! It's a rundown reunion. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, to think of it as a Southland Tales reunion, but yeah, let's. Uh, um... Oh man, you and the one other person who saw Southland Tales. <laughs> uh... <laughs> um, but. Uh... Yeah, man. So, so the, yeah, you bought the merch. And... <laughs> okay, but, and the reason why is the Steagles. So if you're not familiar with the Steagles, you, you want to, like, take a second to maybe try and connect it. I can tell you where they were from, and that should be the hint that seals it for you. Okay, yeah, please, let's do this. Let's play this game. They were the Pennsylvania Steagles. 
the Pennsylvania Steagles. Were they like okay? No, go into the internet on this one. <laughs> okay, well, you, well, he's gonna. I'm gonna just tell you that okay. due to their like war and people not being around to play football. They combined the Steelers and the Eagles into oh, one man. team. <laughs> what year could this have possibly been? I feel like it was in the 60s. I don't know that. If you want to look it up and get us, like, actual dates. But there was a time where they called themselves the Steagles because it was literally a team portmanteau of the Steelers and the Eagles. <laughs> The unforgettable 1943 season due to World War World II. World War II, yeah. Yeah, they became the Steagles. Man, they wanted to be called the, the Pennsylvania Keystoners, but apparently the world thought, no. <laughs> the world was like, we got a name for you. <laughs> we're going to call them the Steagles. It's like my, my old Beatle Eagles cover band, the Beagles. That's a joke from Ed. Why isn't Ed available streaming in the world where we have Peacock? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna ask it every episode until it happens. NBC Universal, give Same me. Same reason we the Drew Carey show. It's all music rights, dude. Like it's, it's yeah, the, the bane of our favorite shows is that they all had also very good soundtracks. Jesus, I mean, like it's such a music rights issue that the second season of Ed had to change their theme song because they could not secure the Foo Fighters song for the second season, and then they were able to secure rights for the third and fourth. Yeah, I know the reason, but I want it. Oh, uh, but man. Yeah, but yeah, I like. I would love, I would die, I would be so happy if I could get an actual Steagles, like, jersey or something like that. Like, anything to represent it, because it, it, it does. It feels like another one of those, like, oh, God, we need to think of a te team name. I will call them the Keys Donors. No, 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 no. Steagles. It's got brand know. recognition. Do you know the full name of the Steagles? Oh, please. Please share. I don't. The Phil Pitt Steagles. <laughs> the best part about that is that it is Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and then Pittsburgh, Philadelphia. It's like <laughs> it's like Cheers where oh. uh, Sam's, um, what's it? Uh, what the hell are their names in real life? The Shelley Long and Ted Danson. Oh, Neither yeah, one yeah. of them wanted higher billing than the other, so they came up with a, all right, Shelly's name will appear on the left side of the screen and be a little bit lower, and Ted's will appear on the right side and be a little bit higher. <laughs> so you guys, <laughs> you're, you're kind of sharing billing. They couldn't call it the pit Phil Steagles, though. Like, it just sounds like it's a it's a pit full of dead birds. Dude, no, okay. it goes, it has it has to be the, 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 the discussion had to have been. Okay, we'll be the Steagles, but Philadelphia's getting first billing in where mm. we come from. Also, here's a little fact. If you've never driven across this country, if you're lucky enough to have never have been in a car traveling somewhere in this country, Pennsylvania is a fucking monster. <laughs> it's so big. Yeah. It's so Pen big. Pennsylvania is the state that kills you, kills you, every, kills you every, every, every time, every time. You're thinking, oh, we'll just get through Pennsylvania. They're on the other side, so we'll to stay for the night. Either direction, no, man, it's, a, yeah, you end up pulling your hair out by the end of it. So, but, like, also consider the fact that, like, Philadelphia and Pennsylvania, they're at least four hours away from each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. So, like, if they had a, they had a completely adequate season they went five four and one <laughs> oh, that's right y'all do towers over here um <laughs> yeah so i didn't want to miss out on a potential steagles moment and as much as i'd want to buy a jersey the jerseys just say washington you need to buy like a t-shirt because the t-shirts are the ones that say Washington football team established 1932 and it's like yeah. no no established 2020 Actually, you know, the big thing to get this year is, I mean, like, this has been a big year for Tops. I was going to say, you got to get the Tops cards. Like, that's that's, that's very that'll, true. That'll be awesome. So so there's your big that's your big update on Tops cards. Go out and get your Fauci card and go ahead and go get your, your Washington. Na and, now, I keep wanting to call them Washington Nationals or the Washington Anythings. Well, Just the Washington Nationals are an actual team. They I know. play baseballs. I, man, the Washington football team. 
I think Sentinels, man. You you lean into its other name, and, and it's the 20th anniversary. If mm-hmm. it weren't the 20th anniversary of the replacements, I'd be like, kick rocks. But no, lean into it. They'd probably have to pay somebody money, though, right? Like, the whole thing is the, the people from the replacements, they're like, oh, we don't want to pay to use the actual team names in this movie. Even though Phil Michaels and, and Madden are in the movie. <laughs> I bet somebody in the room said, "Hey, what about the Sentinels?" Uh, the, I mean, the, the name rolls off the tongue. It's got uh, it's got wonderful recognition amongst the dorks up there, and I think that the argument against it is only one thing: you cannot go from being blamed for having a, uh, a racially blind name to then suddenly basically calling yourselves white cops, <laughs> the white the white cop team. <laughs> like you can't. That's that's not a swing you can get. I, I almost wonder if we'll land on Sentinels next year, but like couldn't do it immediately. Can't do can't do that right away. Can't uh, do yeah. that right so, away. So yeah, you know what? I will I will make I love doing say report predictions. I certainly hope that next year they are called the Sentinels. That they're yeah. just like, we're gonna give it a year, right? Things are a little hot right now. We'll go by the Washington football team, sell a bunch of merchandise. I want them to win the Super Bowl. Holy fuck do I want them to win the Super Bowl. That's oh. now all I want and all I am rooting for. Because I would fucking love it to get a Super Bowl champion Washington football team t-shirt. One of those off-gray shirts that they've already got printed. <laughs> Even if they lose, oh, I'll man. travel to the deepest part of Africa where they give them away. I was going to I was going to say that's really what has to happen to make this the deepest cut possible is they have to make it to the Super Bowl but then lose so that all of their Super Bowl champion shirts are then given away all over the rest of the world and then that becomes the find is the is the lost shirt essentially. <laughs> I'll get to be like uh, Jake Johnson in Jurassic World. Look at his vintage why? Why would there be t-shirts, Jurassic World? Jurassic Park never opened. <laughs> I mean, you buy merchandise before the shop opens. I get it. I, But they, I don't know. I feel like that would be stupid. Nope. But Jurassic Park when fucking pear-shaped, doing the safety and investor check. Right, exactly. They didn't even have, like, the money in line yet. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh fuck, Rick. man! So, yeah, this is so, gonna be such a weird year for for sports in general. This is just. Oh. Right. But after after all that we talked about last week, I needed to laugh a little bit, and the Washington football team is the joke that did it. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay, Siege. So now away from sports and on to something else. Is there something or anything you'd like to discuss this week on the Say Report? I uh, I I. Th- have a question for you Ooh. and i fear it's going to bring the show down oh no but i just i just need to know dev like uh you've been playing that mario game yeah um i figured we'd have to talk about it sometime this week <laughs> yeah, and it sounds yeah, like yeah, we're yeah. in that part of the compliment sandwich where it, it's definitely time for 3d mario Mar- super mario 3d all-stars to yeah. just poop all over the bread <laughs> So, um, so we talked last week or a couple weeks ago. God, what was it? It was last, it was the last episode. Jeez, it's been so long. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, last episode we talked a little bit about how it was coming on its way and we were hesitant because of a couple of uh, fears that we had. I don't even think we could have predicted how kind of bland this game was going to end up being. And I think that might be its biggest crime is it's just like nothing to talk about it came out and i haven't heard word about it since it since it came out nobody like nobody holding it up but nobody tearing it down just kind of meh <laughs> which i think is like a crime as far as i'm concerned for an anniversary edition all-stars game of mario so the couple of issues happened with super mario 3d all-stars um one is it leaked hella early Um, stores had it on the shelves a week before release date. And I don't mean like Lil stores. It wasn't like me getting bloodstained a a week early. This was Walmart Walmart had it for sale a full week before it was supposed to come out. And the second that a video game is available for the Nintendo Switch, it is available to download and play on a hacked Switch. That's just the fact of the matter. 
Um, mm-hmm. I played Super Smash Brothers a full month before it released because someone got their hands on it and uploaded the game. And we all got together and had a party a month before the game came out. It's what convinced me to get Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I will be honest with you. Uh, and I paid money for it, so like it kind of worked if that was the plan. But Super Mario 3D All-Stars leaks, it gets out there. And all of the questions that we had, all of our hesitancies were answered and not answered the right way. <laughs> they were answered incorrectly. It was a resounding, like, <gasps> yep. <laughs> it was essentially was essentially what Nintendo said. We were like, are you really doing it this way? And they said, we sure are, guys. <laughs> uh, you know, like, I, we joked, like, a, a big focus of our last episode was if you just release something that already existed, there's no development on it. Like, it's ghoulish and it's, and it's ridiculous to say. But, like, no, this is almost pure profit for them. And it's all just emulation. Of mm-hmm. games that they already had. And I, I don't know I, at well, all. Well, I, I like, have to say that the biggest thing about us, like, let's just keep talking about us because that makes me happier than talking about this. Um, no, the, the biggest thing that you that you said last week is it, it strikes me as, like, when they figured out that they could just download the ROM to Super Mario World and then just put that up on the eShop. Super the, Mario the, Brothers. The, let's just, it was the original I, I, game. Was it? Yeah. Uh, okay, I, yeah, because I thought, didn't they also get caught with World? Didn't Super Mario World end up being a ROM that was like a well-known ROM? Yeah, I'm in, fairly uh, certain that it went it went all around the world. Yeah, but Super Mario World, because there was that whole discussion that uh, Super Mario Advance 2 on the Game Boy Advance is clearly not just a ROM being emulated because they fixed a missing pixel on the mm-hmm, title right. screen. Right, right, right. Like, there's, like, <laughs> like there's, there's evidence. There's albeit evidence insanity, as to yeah. it being a different game. Uh, right. So that was something that, like, I, that, I was reminded of that this weekend, going through just all of the fervor about uh, 3D All-Stars. Well, yeah, so so the idea that they realized, basically, that they could just let their, basically let the fan base do the work, come in and crush the fan base, shut down things like ROM sites and emulation and stuff like that, and then have the goal to like turn around and try and sell you the ROM that they just basically stole. <laughs> um, which, you know, like what goes around comes around. That's the eternal question. Like it was stolen in the first place. If I steal it back, is that right? So like it that, this feels like they just went out and just did that again. They just found a couple of really good ROMs of these three games, slapped them onto a disc and sold it to you. Well, not even a disc, right? No, it's a, it's a cart, mostly digital. Uh, the carts are hyper rare to come by. I talked about having two pre-ordered. My target one was delayed until October 2nd. Uh, My Best Buy one arrived on time, which is going to be an important distinction for other things that we have to talk about this episode. Uh, But yeah, I was able to pre-order the game from two locations. One of them arrived. One is delayed. And I honestly don't think it will ever come because I have a, a set of Uno Minimalista that I pre-ordered from Target, and they were supposed to arrive in August, and yeah. I'm staring down the barrel of October, and Walmart shipped me a set of them today. Just... I ordered them today, and they shipped today. So I'll have Uno Minimalista to talk about the next episode of the Say Report. I'm excited for that. But yeah, Target not really dropping the ball in a lot of ways, shapes and forms this year. Really susceptible to bots seems to be the big issue with Target. Uh, yes. I don't know if that's just a Target problem, though, because uh, the other big thing that happened this week was pre-orders for PlayStations going right. out. Oh, and, and the RTX 3080. And the RTX 3080. Like, like, let's talk about all the huge <laughs> fucking tech things that happened in the last couple of weeks that just got fucking shafted by bots. Like, within within seconds, all of those items being available for a 600% markup on eBay and things like that. I believe that there was already a, a PS5 pre-order going for $2,000, I think, was one of the high numbers I, that I heard. The highest um, I saw, I think, was 53,000 pounds. Oh, yeah. And I'm just Great. like, no, that, that's absurd. Yeah, 12,000 was the number on... Uh, 1,200, sorry, was the number that I saw last Thursday... When I was mm-hmm. able to get a PS5 pre-order. Uh, luckily, I don't know what happened, how how we pulled it off, but we do. One one should be arriving at the Decker base 
Uh, I hope. I mean, like, even though we have a pre-order in, I, I don't know if it's until it's at the house. I'm not going to rest easy. Nowadays, you can't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right? Who knows? Um, but yeah, so it's one of those situations with the PS5 and that same night, you know, looking at it and seeing one on eBay for $1,200 and like the real discussion of, do we want to try to sell ours? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and man. like no no because i and i'm not even one of those people that has to have the newest thing as soon as it's new i know that that may sound strange with all the talk of pre-orders that i've done over this last year but what 2020 has shown me is that if i want something i should get it before it's available like that's just especially in a world where everything is delivery that like yeah. going to the store is kind of the last option. <laughs> right, exactly. So I mean you're there's already so there's already that idea that you're you don't have to go anywhere to get it, right? Like yeah. so you're sitting there on your couch, it's at your fingertips. So then it becomes a question of why aren't you buying it? And that's a gross like feeling. I'm not saying that that's like that that is just human nature or anything like that. That is just what this world has done to us. Is like we are now sitting in this place where we're just like, well, it's available. I should get it. And that's the thing that surprises me so much about all of this stuff is that, like, I, I, you know, I can't speak to the computer parts industry, but, like, with the PlayStation and with Nintendo and, and the Mario 3D All-Stars game, like, they're – they – they really reek of like short ordered, right? Like, like they like purposely limited material, and like, I to a point where it's not even, it's not even like, oh, we just didn't know this many people would be interested in it. Like, they just legitimately are just like, yep, we just wanted to make sure that shelves were empty, so that's all that anybody was talking about, and it's like that sucks. Like, what? <laughs> When did it become good business practice to not make enough merchandise to meet demand? That's a real weird, like, way to go about it. So, Nintendo, definitely. Nintendo, I, I, I 100% feel their, their marketing strategy with Super Mario 3D All-Stars was to say it's only going to be available for a limited amount of time and build up this whole, you need to get it now fervor. And honestly, in the deepest, darkest, truest part of my mind, because it's not that good a program, mm -hmm. it's not a good product. <laughs> yeah. Um, so get it now before you read a review of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. There's no doubt about it. And of course, you're going to delist something like that down the line when you know maybe they're going to do something better and they don't want it to be there or maybe they're just going to take their money and then they don't want people to be able to remind everyone about it that they'd like yeah. just shit out this little product in order to take advantage of the world when it was in crisis i mean that that's going like a little tinfoil hatty i don't know man i i don't know if we talked about this or not but what the fuck is a 35 year anniversary is that something that i'm just not like in tune to <laughs> like, like it really does feel like they're just kind of taking advantage of the moment because, like, it's not – if if we were on year 25 and this happened, I would think, okay, like, they were planning for it. Things hit. Weird things are weird. Blah, 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 blah. This really, like, hey, we didn't talk about it beforehand, which Nintendo never does. But you combine that with some of the other circumstantial evidence of we realized how well things like mm, Animal Crossing sold for us. So people are clearly, like, itching for something to do in this time. And, like, we don't have to do much work on these things. Hey, look at that. It's a nice round number, 35. Let's slap a thing together and throw it out there. Kind of starts to feel like exactly what happened with this product. <laughs> I mean, the question that I would need answered is, did they do anything for the 30th anniversary? Because if they didn't do anything big for the 30th anniversary, and honestly, I don't think that they did. I'm trying to go back mentally it, five years in my mind. I don't even think a game came out that year. Yeah. Maybe. was it, it wasn't the year of Luigi, right? I think that was 2014 was the year of no, Luigi. I don't know, man. So, That's, yeah. Uh, but I don't think they did anything for the 30th anniversary. So it's one of those situations where celebrating every 10 years sort of becomes the norm because of that. Games in the game industry is strange like that anyway. Like 25th anniversary for Final Fantasy and the PSP remakes. And then the 30th anniversary, I, I don't know why those didn't come to 
broader systems, right? Like there was talk that they were going to do a big release of all the Final Fantasy games, and then nothing, nothing ever came of that. So I don't know. It just it's this weird thing where the game industry gets away with it. They get yeah. away with just celebrating anniversaries. If if Mario were celebrating his thirty fourth anniversary with the three D collection. Then I'd be scratching my head. Actually, I wouldn't be scratching my head. That'd make a lot more fucking sense because 4D is the fourth letter of the alphabet. So them like w- trying to sell it as the 3D collection for the 34th anniversary. I mean, Reggie fils would have had a fucking field day with that. He yeah. would have gone like, Just- yeah. <laughs> To, no, sorry, to answer your question about 2015, we're looking at that year was supposed to have Star Fox Zero and uh, and Breath of the Wild that year. Uh, those both ended up getting delayed out of the year. So that was actually a shit year for Nintendo. <laughs> um, nothing as far as Mario goes. Splatoon was really kind of their biggest hit that year. Um, Splatoon, yeah. the one that sold the second Wii to everybody who had a Wii. I wish I were kidding about that. I mean, I didn't get a second Wii, but the amount of people I knew who bought a second Wii so that they could play Splatoon together Mm -hmm. online was shocking to me. Like I met one person and I'm like, that's gonna, that's gonna be an anomaly. Right. And then I just kept meeting people. I don't know. I don't get Splatoon uh, personally, but Oh no, I totally get Splatoon because like, especially Splatoon 2 where, where there's a lot more there, there's a a lot of uh, quality of life adjustments to that one over the first one. And Nintendo is uh, normally so bad at at, like learning from past mistakes. And the fact that they were able to do it in one game is pretty awesome. But I mean, like, you know, the, the easiest explanation is always the best. Like it's a shooter. You can play with your kids on a Nintendo console. And so, people fucking love it the end like that's really what it is seems fair seems fair but yeah to go back to the 3d all-stars collection it bothers me only the only reason that it bothers me i i is that they invoked the the all-stars title yeah like if it were just the super mario 3d collection yeah. that's fine then i don't mind that they omitted super mario galaxy 2 because it's just a collection of 3D games. But by right. using All-Stars, honestly, if you're collecting the Super Mario 3D All-Stars, you don't have Galaxy there. You have Galaxy 2 because it's the better game I just also, from an objective standpoint. Yeah, I also don't think that you bother with Sunshine. I think that what you do is you do Super Mario 64 and then you do Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2. I think the one that you actually omit is Sunshine. Because, like, we talked about this last week, but... It's such a weird game, and it and the the fan base on that game in particular, out of the three, is so mixed. You know, the Mario Maker is. I'm sorry, Mario. No, that's another 2015 game, Mario Maker. Um, but that's about it. That happened for Mario that year. Um, that's about it. One of the best games to come to the franchise. But anyway, um, the uh, Mario 64 is like clearly beloved across everything, right? And Galaxy is like, Galaxy was that game that brought at least around us it feels like it brought a lot of people to mario that had not played mario since they were kids like it really felt like whereas like super mario 64 was kind of the last game that a lot of those people played and then it wasn't until mario galaxy that they were like yeah it's been a long time since i've had a good mario game in my hands forgetting completely that like sunshine was smack in the middle there somewhere right and i think another issue with that is that people just didn't buy the gamecube so and everybody bought the wii so You can be forgiven for forgetting about Super Mario Sunshine. I mean, I know that my copy is not with me. It's somewhere else. And Mm -hmm. I'd love to go get it back. But I honestly feel like if I approached the people who have my copy of Super Mario Sunshine, they would forget that I have, they have it. (laughs) Plus, I once took a copy of Say Anything from them thinking it was my copy of Say Anything. And then later, like years later, I found my copy of Say Anything. So, like, <laughs> karmically, I think we're even. Uh, I'll admit that, oh, right? Man. Statute of limitations on, like... Yeah. And, and plus, they got a fair trade, right? I don't know. The, the, this is... A, I don't want to discuss any further. Perfect Dark may also be involved in this situation. <laughs> um, yeah, I think if you're doing a 3D All-Stars, like, like in retrospect... The thing that I think really what you do is you don't you don't bring Sunshine, you bring Mario Maker Two, and you, you Sunshine is the one that you save for later as like DLC or or you throw it up on the on the emulator shop, on right? The like shop, yeah, 
for what it, whatever that is inevitably going to be because you know that that we're going to soon see a GameCube shop, right? Like we must. Um, or a 64 I, I feel shop, like, please. I mean, this also feels like a big proof of concept of how N64 and GameCube and even Wii games will run on the Switch. <laughs> and by all accounts, everybody is happy with how they run. So, like, they've opened the door to releasing the games like that. Which we called. And, and that's <laughs> the big issue is... But I think of more the All-Star problem, and using the term All-Star is... When Super Mario All-Stars came out for the Super Nintendo, every single one of those games got completely rebuilt in 16-bit graphics. Mm -hmm. And... Ha and save states were not save states saving was added to one two three and four all of them saves were added to all of them i'm sorry that that was stupid of me to say it like that um and then even further down the line when they added super mario world to carts of super mario brothers all stars mm -hmm. they they made changes to that game too they gave luigi a unique sprite and they changed some of the sound effects so like, if you're going to call something the all-star version of Mario, based on everything we have up to this point, people are assuming that some work is going to be put in. Right. So if you call it the collection, then I'm not, I don't have that, I don't have that expectation. I feel like right. at this point, you've just collected them and are presenting them to me for your newest system. When you oh. invoke all-stars. Right. Right. That that there's there's a level that I am expecting. There's a level of expectation because of what you've delivered previously under that banner that now I can never trust again. Does that hold true for the Wii All Stars collection that they put out? Like I like what like I I honestly I forget about that all the time. Even after you brought it up last week, I have then since forgotten about it until this moment. Like so uh, the difference between the Wii All-Stars edition is it came with a lot of physical memorabilia. It came mm. with an art book. It came with a DVD, like, celebrating it, like, with a documentary celebrating Mario and what Mario means. So even though the game was still Super Mario Brothers All-Stars, a game that was not available on the, the virtual console, you right. could get all of the games that were present there, or you could get this disc that had those all-star editions playable for the Wii. So, like, there was value there. There was right. some value there. But also, they went to the nines with pack-in materials to make it a 25th anniversary celebration. Mm. And also, like, I don't care that it's the same thing because it's not Super Mario Brothers All-Stars All-Stars. It's right, not Super right. Mario Brothers Advance, which was everything changed and different. It was clearly for the 25th anniversary, we're re-releasing Super Mario Brothers All Stars on the Wii, and you're gonna get a bunch of bonus swag to go with it. Yeah, I got yeah, like like on a superficial level, like I I they didn't even bother making good artwork for this one. Like like, like never mind the fact that there wasn't like fun toys to come along with it. Like it also feels like they just didn't they just slapped together some basic box art from the other three, just smashed together out of the box for this one. Yeah, and it's not even like a a, a high resolution like picture. Like I'm looking at my sealed copy here because I was able to get another sealed copy, and I look at it and it's just like. That's not quality. That's not like Nintendo quality. That's not what I expect from them. Though now it should be what I expect from them. And that's disappointing, right? That they've like for sixty dollars from everyone who's their fan, they've they've lost our trust. Yeah, I I don't know, man. I like like the other question I have about this is like one of the things that people do one of the sins that people commit most when they're talking about Nintendo is they don't ever separate Nintendo America from like Nintendo larger, right? So is this one of those cases where like Nintendo America just kind of like stepped in and was just like, well, let's get this out? Or is this like, is this coming from up top? Is this something that released worldwide? Because I have no no knowledge of any type of worldwide feelings about this release or, or even if it was available. So it had to have been released worldwide because people were playing it on Thursday and not because they hacked, had hacked Wii 
had hacked switches. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, but because, you know, if you have an eShop account with, in Australia, you can download games as soon as it's midnight in Australia on release date. That's like, there's a pro tip. If I mean, I think everybody knows that because the Switch is region free, uh, you're allowed to do that. And the, the process for doing it is very easy. It's not like PlayStation 3, you used to be able to do international accounts and get access to things. But right, that right. one, like, you needed an address. <laughs> yeah, but people used to do it so that they could play, like, fucking Fantasy Star and stuff on yeah. it, right? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, games that would never come over here. So because right. the Switch is region free, you can do it. So it's not one of those things that it was released in America. It was definitely released worldwide. I'm just not seeing any information on a worldwide scale. Um, I mean, that's the other thing. If it's like we're talking about an All-Stars release. We're talking about what is supposedly an anniversary for them. They're calling it the 35th anniversary edition. Like, and the fact that there's not a a worldly sense to it is also super weird to me. Correct. But I think that that might have to do with COVID and everything. Like, I think if the theme park in Japan were probably still on schedule to open later this yeah. year, yeah. Uh, you would have had a tie-in to that whole thing. Like, I feel like this is sort of them, you know, treading water until a release. Because yeah. it had been so long before we, between getting something from Nintendo. And, I mean, yeah, we had Origami King, and I, you, know, you enjoyed that, and it seems like a lot of people enjoyed it. But Animal Crossing to uh, Paper Mario and the Origami Guy, and then nothing until Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity in November... Like, that's yeah. a big time to not hear anything from Nintendo. Yep. So, this does also feel like filler. And, like, I also wonder, there were all these rumors in the beginning of the year that they were going to do something like this. I wonder if, like, the best April Fool's pranks on the internet, why the internet sucks because of April Fool's Day, uh, this is a joke unless we see enough interest in it and then it will become real. Yeah. So I feel like people talking about it, Nintendo's like, how hard would it be for us to knock something like that together? I mean, you know, like, I don't ever want to shit on the idea of these re-releases. I know it was really popular early on when, when like, re-releases were first getting big for people to talk about what a, like, lazy, like, way to go it was. But we have seen that there are ways to do it. And not be lazy. I mean, the the collections of of Spyro and uh, Crash, Crash, and like we've seen these we've seen these re releases and remakes, uh, up makes and things like this that do put a lot of love into the product. Hell, and we've so, seen it from Nintendo. We've well, seen right. it with uh, Super Mario Kart Eight Deluxe and definitive edition of Hyrule Warriors, and even going further than that, the Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD remakes for Wii yeah. U. I mean, I would even say that as much as we had our our, our gruff with it, like the Zelda uh, Link's Awakening that came out this past year, right? Like it was, Did we it was have only... gruff with that? I fucking love that game. I, I like, 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 only so much in that, like, it runs a little shoddy on the Switch. Like, there's, it gets a little hitchy, and, and like, there's definitely some elements to the, to the grinding that they kind of, like, pushed out. The stuff out they make... added is, right. is, is not necessary, but, but. But they added it, right? Like, yeah. that's the thing, is, like, as much as we want to, like, as much as that's the kind of the stuff that we didn't necessarily enjoy about it, it at least, it points to an effort on their part to do something with the game, to make sure that they're not just taking a ROM of the game, slapping it onto a, a plastic cart, and and asking for $60. Like, <laughs> like there's, this, there's this element to it of, like, at least they're trying something that makes me okay with that being a thing, right? And so... I want to make sure that the, that 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 it is within that context of of like celebrating the idea that like I want these products, I want them to come out, and I want a I want there to be, I want there to be a, something to help me fall in love again. And these games, I love these games, but I don't I don't need them right now. So like I haven't bought the game yet. Because of our conversation last week made me a little hesitant, plus the fact it kind of became impossible to get a hold of one. And then by the time I was like, okay, maybe that was the time to go out and start looking again, I had heard that it was kind of a bummer. <laughs> so like I, I like I don't wanna I don't wanna be bummed out about these games. I still love these games. So in the interest of fairness, I do wanna point out some of the work that they did do 
Uh, they did have to localize all of the menus and like tutorials to reflect the fact that you're playing on the Switch. So it does say ZR or ZL instead of the Z button um, in Super Mario 64. And it says, you know, plus instead of press start. So there's that. Uh, Super Mario Sunshine is one that had a, a weird change that I didn't even think of before playing it in the fact that it doesn't have the analog um, tr shoulder buttons that the GameCube was famous for. Right. So in order to, in, in Super Mario Sunshine, if you pull the trigger all the way in, then you're locked to place and you can aim with the flood. And if it's held in a little bit, like you can move around while you're doing it. Right. Okay. Um, okay. So they've made it so the ZR button is that you're stuck in place and you can aim and it's full blast. And the R button proper, that one, if you hold it, you can run around. And it's like three quarter power. So it's like a little higher than like I'd want it to be if I'm running around spraying. Because like it's a little hard to aim. Uh, yeah. So they did do that. Like that's the thing that they they had to go into the game and modify that so that that would work. Sure. And that's like and that's the kind of stuff that they have to do in order to make the game work though, right? Yeah. Like I'm thinking of like back Wind Waker is a fantastic example of this. When they decide that, well, we've got the second screen on the Wii U, we're just gonna make it so that your map is up the whole time, right? Like there's there's these elements of uh, equality. I mean, it is tried and true quality of life changes like like things that make the game more enjoyable now that we know better about game making and it feels like there's none of that in there so like yeah they definitely made the work to make these games playable but that's because if they charge you 60 dollars and you got it home and you couldn't do like two-thirds of the fucking things in mario in mario sunshine because like flood is just full power all the time like that would be untenable well right? that's funny you should say that Sejin. Because we have to talk about Galaxy, but they went with the Shindo version of Super Mario 64. Does that mean anything to you? Um, I, it's not like a fucking, like, uh, what's the what's the word? Like, it's not one of those, like, uh, blood bloodstained uh, Dark Souls-style ones, right? Kaizo, that's the word. No, it's not, it's not a Kaizo. Oh, okay. It's not a hack. <laughs> um, okay. What it is is, m like most games, uh, it released in Japan... And there were then they found glitches because it was out in Japan long before it was in America. So then right. for the American release, they fixed those glitches and then released it over here. But then they found a bunch of glitches in the U.S. version that they patched for the PAL release. Right. And then they released what, for in all intended purposes, is an international version. But it was exclusively <laughs> released in Japan. Um <laughs> That, like, you'd have to import it over here and it wouldn't have the ridges. Because, like, the way that we kept old systems from playing international games is stupid. And we can focus on that for a proper episode someday, but it's friggin' stupid. So, like, even if I got the Shindo version and brought it to America, it would not work with my American system without some customization. I was going to say, unless you broke the plastic, right? <laughs> broke the plastic, or uh, I was at a game exchange in Connecticut, and mm -hmm. I saw a Japanese copy of Mario Golf, and I almost bought it just to have it. Uh, yep. The price was right and all that, but then when they got it out of the case and I looked at it, they had crudely cut the notches into the back of the game cart so mm -hmm. that it would fit into their system. And I'm like, yeah, no, thank you. I don't <laughs> want it damaged. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's one of those situations and that Shindo version, uh, it corrected glitches that they hadn't found between the Japanese and U S and then going forward. And a couple of those changes, like the big changes is they clarify whether or not Luigi is dead. No, that's, that's not there. That'd <laughs> that's be great. still up in the air. <laughs> that's, Luigi may still be dead. He can't be dead because canonically he's appeared in games afterwards. He wow. was in space Dang. having Rosalina as a baby because also, Luigi is Rosalina's oh. father. Come God, fight blow, me. Blown my mind. No, we also know that ghosts are real in, in this universe because Luigi fights them. He Maybe he's just one of them. No, Maybe Luigi's he's the not. slimer of the Nintendo universe. That's terrifying. Don't do that. <laughs> now I'm grossed out. 
oh, Luigi eating a bunch of food and dry and hot dogs, and he's Luigi's tell his best friend. I mean, there, there's got to be art out there of Gooigi doing that, right? Oh, like, of course, yeah. <laughs> if, if there's not, there's a missed opportunity. The only reason you create Gooigi is to put him into Slimer, like Deviant fan art. art. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's what it exists for. Uh, but yeah, so the the big things in the Shindo version is it's terrible to speed run because you can't do Lakitu skip in the beginning. So oh. no matter what, Lakitu is going to stop and be like, welcome to the castle. I'm going to be your cameraman. And it's like, shut up, Lakitu. Nobody likes you. I like you, Lakitu. I'm just saying. That's annoying if you're speed running. But more egregiously is the backwards long jump. Which is oh, yeah. uh, required to, you know, gain so, infinite yeah, speed. To, and Yeah, to, to glitch through so many different walls yeah. and stuff like the that. The 16 yeah. star run requires it. Uh, and if you want to break the endless staircase it's required, uh, that is gone. That is completely patched out. Um, so, no, <laughs> so another reason why you would want to re-release this game on the Switch... And it seemed like for a time, Nintendo was kind of on board with speedrunning. You look at something like Kirby Star Allies that, like, really lent itself to speedrunning. Or even Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze with the funky mode. Because, yep. like, both of those felt like we're trying to appeal to the speedrunner industry. And now, like, Nintendo, it feels like they actively are upset with people who speedrun their games. When That's you not look the at, point. When you yeah, look yeah. at some of the people... Who, who are, like, well-known in the community and interactions that they have shared when they've talked to people from Nintendo. Like, even to the fact that, you know, they had someone from Nintendo introducing one of them once, and the, the Nintendo person had no idea who they were, even though they have the world record on, like, Super Mario Brothers 3. So it's just one of those things where, like, this felt to the speedrunning community like a kick in the face... Because yeah. imagine if you could just speed run using the switch, how mm -hmm. easier that would make things. But no, we use the version that you can't speed run this game. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. Well, and so like a lot of this stuff. So as much as like we can attribute a lot of this to malice, right? And 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 some of it may still be. I don't want to forgive it for with what I'm about to say. But we also have to remember who we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. This is Nintendo, and they famously infamously are the like the old man who almost gets it they're your dad who's just like like right this is cool kids isn't it and you're like yeah, you're not doing it right like, like <laughs> dad you're flossing three months late um but like there's this there's this idea with nintendo all the time where they're just like they think that they have figured out what their fans want and so they put it out and it's just not what they want. So like 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 look at things like uh um uh Prime. What's like why can't I Metroid? think of anything today? Metroid Prime, right? Where like it's gained its fans over time, but when it first came out, people were like, I don't want Halo in the Metroidverse. Like that's not what I want. Like and like there's there's this element that they they kind of go out there, they put a thing out there because they're like, this is what you've been asking for, isn't it? And we're all like, no, this isn't what we've been asking for. But the reason that they get to stick around and keep doing it is because eventually it is kind of what people get attached to. So, like, in five years, we may be talking about, like, kids out there where this is the only way that they ever played Mario 64. So, like, and, and think about how much we love that game. If this is the only way they've ever played it, they're going to grow attached to this game. It's inevitable. Because at the end of the day, it's still a good game. I don't think that's going to happen, though. And uh -huh. I don't think that's going to happen because I think the, the hurdle that you have to clear for engagement for somebody who grew up post- Jesus, like a 10 year old who'd be playing this game right now. So someone born in 2010, I feel like the hurdles to, to understand this game are too great, especially where we already live in a world where people would rather watch other people play games on YouTube than play games themselves. I just, I don't, if that happens, I want to be proven wrong about this. But mm -hmm. I'll, I'll share the story. I, I don't, you know, like, I'm not trying to put her on blast or anything. But Dale was watching me play Super Mario 64 Friday night. And she, like, I hate this. Why would I ever want to play this game? And that's <laughs> as an observer watching, like, 
seeing how much of a fight it was with the camera and yeah. how like like she felt like this is just a collection of mini games and that doesn't feel like Mario to me and it's like I never thought that anyone would look at Super Mario 64 and say it's a collection of mini games but then in that mindset like I'm going from racing Koopa the Quick to doing the Princess's Secret Slide to racing a penguin and it's like yeah these stars are kind of mini games and but I mean, they're but vague that, as fuck mini games. Yes, but we we you kind of can apply that, and this is I mean, this is no offense, like like clearly like Dale Dale is affected by this, but that ends up setting the standard for what Mario is for the rest of time. And I hate like, that. Look at and Mario I Odyssey. Say that straight I mean, up. Look at, well, right, but look at Mario <laughs> Maker. You know, one of the biggest problems that I've always had with Mario Maker is that you can never quite make a level as long as the levels that used to be in Super Mario, right? Like, and, and used to be, like, I always feel like those levels, as much as I try and make them, pan them out with, like, you know, tube areas and second levels and and, and ghost doors and, and all this shit, like, they still only last at their best, like, a minute. Right, and there are Mario levels where you can get get through them in a minute if you want, or you can spend fifteen minutes in a level, like finding all sorts of cool weird shit, and you just can't do that in Mario Maker. So, like, but but what I have to remind myself is because that's not what Mario is anymore. Mario is like like the basic run of Mario since Mario sixty four is enter the door, find the star, enter the door again, find a star, find a different star, or like it's very very rare that you can go around and kind of just do everything. Odyssey has this really nice balance for me because it doesn't make you restart every time because it doesn't kick you out to an overworld because there is this idea that while I'm doing this I can also work on that and that feels really good it's one of the reasons I like Odyssey so much but that's just kind of like that's been Mario pretty much all of Dale's adult life <laughs> yeah that pretty much all of Dale's life right mm -hmm. Like, that's, that's what Mario has been. And I get it. And I also understand, then, why when she goes back to, like, Super Mario Brothers, she doesn't enjoy that either because it's not that minigame-centric type of Super Mario Brothers that, <laughs> yeah. that she knows. It's like, she's damned either way. She doesn't yeah. really like what modern Mario is, and it's too hard to get into what original Mario was. And I'm just using her as, like, a test case in this situation, but like to hear her say, I would never want to play this game. It's like, no, I get that. Like, I can't even be upset that you say that because part of me doesn't even want to be playing this game. Yeah. Like when this it was all I... I had. <laughs> yeah. Right. But this is why I'm so interested in the re-release of, of super Mario you right? Like, because, and why I've been kind of itching for it for so long and was disappointed to find out that I still have to wait another six months for it. Um, is like this idea that, that it's, it makes the side scrolling Mario's when they come out such a, such a unique and precious thing so like super mario brothers u luigi u super mario 3d worlds which is the one that i'm really talking about um but like like those are the things that like i i look forward to and i get so like antsy because they just don't make them like that anymore right and it's what makes it so special when they do come out and it's killing me that that is the one that they're like sitting on because i would have much rather this time of year had that be the one that came out and then say to me like down the line we're also going to look into doing super mario 64 you know and and super mario galaxy like sunshine is such a nice surprise for me as a fan of that game but i still cannot believe that that's the one that they chose to go with over over galaxy 2 I mean, it just stems from the fact that there's probably more nostalgia for that game than anything else. Everyone that I hear talking about it is excited to play Super Mario Sunshine again. Whether they didn't like it the first time, so they're going to give it another try, or I remember loving it and I'm excited to do it again on a modern system. Like, Sunshine seems to be the game seller in a lot of ways. Especially when there's a PC port of Super Mario 64 out there that can have up to 4K graphics and smoother textures, and a modern camera. Like, you can get all that for free. It's mm -hmm. just out there. You have to look for it because Nintendo ceased and desisted it as fast as they could. But, like, it's, I don't know. It's just strange. But Sunshine, like, getting that to emulate as well as you could was always kind of tricky. So to have it from Daddy Nintendo, like, yeah. that, that works for a lot of people. 
Um, but also it feels like a missed opportunity that a system that uses GameCube controllers for Smash Brothers doesn't detect when a GameCube controller is plugged in and switch to that control scheme. Yeah. That's a missed opportunity, Nintendo. And yeah. also the last thing, because I want to, I don't want to forget it. I want to give Galaxy its proper because this is an important thing in terms of going forward with Wii emulation. I feel like this is the discussion for how we're going to get something like Skyward Sword re-released on the Switch, uh, yeah. which by all accounts I think is going to happen. I don't have a date or anything like that, but I do feel like that there's a good chance that's going to happen. Uh, Super Mario Galaxy is run by the the CPU of the Switch while the GPU is being handled by an emulator. So they had to weirdly bridge the gap between the two in order to get that game to properly run on a Switch. And that makes sense when you consider the fact that it actually works with a controller and yeah. has gyro controls for things. Because those That's didn't fucking... exist. Yeah, that fucking wild that they had to, <laughs> that they figured out that that was the way to solve that issue. So like it, so it, and that stuff you can't look at it and say Nintendo put in zero effort because there's effort there in all three games, uh, even if it's like as small as updating the tutorial stuff, but to get it so this game interacts with the modern CPU while running off of an emulator's graphics score. That's incredible. That's incredible work that needs to be done. So I, I have to wonder then if it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. The idea that, that this is something that they have been working on for a while, clearly, because as you're pointing out, there is definitely something under the hood that is different about these games. But I have to also wonder if they decided to maybe move a deadline up and say like we've been working on these games and we were going to release them as say the 3d collection at some point but well we've hit a nice round number and shit's gone crazy in the world so why don't we just pump this out in early fall like you know like, like let's aim for september possibly november release and just get it in people's hands because right now we could make bank on it, right? So it almost feels like what they did is they started the work and then put themselves on this like superficial deadline in order to just get the damn thing out. And and it's almost not fair. I would rather find out that this game was supposed to have come out this year, but they delayed it to for, and you know for two years. Then you lose that whole necessary like 35th anniversary nonsense, which which is like just just already just marketing nonsense. Like who cares about the 35th anniversary? and then like tell me that you're just putting a good game out and you're gonna do, you're gonna put the effort into cleaning this stuff up uh because like like you're pointing out they started that work why did they decide that this was the this was the state that it was okay to go out in i also feel like a big driving force was the uh pc port the rebuilt from the original source code uh that came out this year that feels like the kind of thing that puts a fire under a company's ass to make sure that they have a actual version that yeah. can be making them money, especially what that port has gone through in the last three months is insane. Like I really do need to upgrade my version of it because the last one, like it was still kind of spotty, but I was watching somebody play it and I'm like, it was almost unrecognizable as Super Mario 64, but like in the best way possible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's a, uh, it's something, uh, let me tell you, I would have much rather they released 3d world too as well. Sorry, because like stuck at home with people that has incredible multiplayer. Mm -hmm. And like multiplayer, like couch co-op multiplayer, that'd be great for families. And in fact, uh, Zach from Board with Friends, which I just did an episode of Board with Friends. Uh, this is where I'm going to drop that information, talking about the new Transformers uh, episode. That's out. That's finally a release. So if you want to hear me talk about Optimus Prime and not bring up our own personal theories about Optimus Prime, I behaved myself. Definitely search out that episode of Board with Friends. Uh, it's available on all major podcast stuff. SoundCloud is the, the big one for them. Uh, but he contacted me on Friday saying, should I get 3D All-Stars or 3D World? And like my answer was, you should get 3D World because you have kids and you're going to enjoy playing it with your kids. Mm -hmm. Like, But that doesn't come out for five months, Zach. <laughs> And he didn't know that it didn't come out for five months 
because the marketing didn't distinguish that very well. Yeah, yeah. So like, sit on that. Um, so he bought. But... He, uh, but I believe he got All Star because he's like, oh, I don't have to choose. I can get one now and one later. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I get that. But 3D World is the one that I think that he would enjoy more with his family, and that his family would enjoy more. I mean, my 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 dream right now is that 3D World comes out and they've done some really good like loving to it. That it, that's something about that game, like whether it's a, a what was the one that they added to Super Mario U, the the, the, the ribbit Luigi rabbit. U? And, well, and Luigi U, but oh, no, you they mean added Nabbit? the whole the, the whole Nabbit function. Yeah, yeah, the like un the like like the the oh, and you, know, you can't lose and, uh, and Toadette and the, right and the yeah. Crown. Yeah, like those were great things that were added to right. uh, Wii U uh, Super Mario U Deluxe. That right. would be awesome. And I honestly feel like uh, the the big things that I want, spoilers for Super Mario World, if I want Rosalina available, Rosalia, sorry, Rosalina is a Pokemon, Rosalia to be available from the beginning, I don't want mm -hmm. her locked behind finishing the game. Right. Uh, well, right, exactly. Like, make it, you know, and they, they actually, they did do this with the with the re-release of Hyrule Warriors, right? Where, like, you just buy it, it's called the quote-unquote definitive collection, and, like, I would say 60 to 75% of the game is just unlocked from the get-go. You don't have to wait to unlock it later on. So that's, like, like a majority of characters, especially because it's the ones you really want to start off with before you start getting into, like, Tingle. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, like, there's, so there's that element to it um yeah so like basic stuff unlocked like having rosalia available there having nabbit there having the the having crown toadette too like i don't toadette, think you need yep. to have the crown because prince is that peach is actually a playable character in that game but i think you have toad why not have toadette because she has become such a and it wouldn't be that much harder to add her really so yeah. that you know young women can see themselves in their video games and, like, that's awesome. That's one of the best things. But, like, if you just have Peach, then it's a fight for that. If you offer alternative female characters, fuck, throw Daisy in there. That'd be awesome. Right, And then, right. like, and the, and the fact of that game is no one is really better than anybody else in that game. I mean, right. not There's that I recall, no... like... Yeah, there's no, like, weird special moves or anything like yeah, that. No, not... the only big thing is that Nabbit can't die. Like, the big thing with, with Nabbit is that he's... Like like Funky Kong in the in in the re-release of of um, Frozen, yeah. But <laughs> Fro Frozen, I would love Funky Frozen edition. with Funky Kong. Uh, um, uh, oh my God, I want Funky Kong to sing "Let It Go." <laughs> being available in that, yeah. If God, if Funky Kong shows up in fucking 3D World, I will lose my shit. I don't think um, that's gonna happen, but it but would yeah. be very cool. Uh, I think that, but also the big difference is. That it has Bowser's Fury, which seems to be like a DLC for the game. Like, it, right. it looks like it's going to happen after the events of 3D World. And that alone, if I were on the fence, would be enough to get me to get the game. Because it seems like new content in that world. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just, just show that one, like, some real love and have it in a weird way like make up for this like have it be like look this is the thing that we were really paying attention to you motherfuckers kept asking for super mario sunshine so we gave it to you like we 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 packed that in with two other games you kind of wanted to like <laughs> like like but that wasn't the point guys that was just there to keep you keep you fat and happy until this thing came and along. let's talk another and let's talk another theory as to why the the 3d all-stars is getting delisted in march it's so that people will buy th super mario 3d world yeah and it, and it gives people a, a month to maybe pick up this other $60 game that will not have a price drop because it is a limited release. And because Be it's Nintendo. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, but, you know, I got Fire, War or Emble uh, Fire Emblem Warriors for $20. Sometimes they go down. Rarely, but sometimes they do. Uh, but, yeah, it's a, it's a strange situation, uh, needless to say. I don't want to talk about video games anymore. I really want to talk about some movies. <laughs> Are you like are you down to clown for a little bit longer on on the Say Report Siege? Yeah, man, let's talk some movies. Like what's going on? Well, I saw Drive and we never really got to talk about it and you seemed really excited to talk about Drive. <laughs> I am really excited to talk about Drive because I think it's such an interesting movie to go back to now after like uh like getting so much uh 
superhero nonsense it, it, it thrown in our faces over the last few years like as somebody that like completely buys into the nonsense but we constantly talk about these things like like dc and marvel and like very every so often we get somebody that tries to jump into the superhero game and that's like hey we're not dc or marvel we're we're something else we're right dark man um... and right right exactly and so what's really interesting to me is is going back and watching a movie like drive it's it's hard to not think about like the influences that superhero movies kind of have on a film like that because it's not so in your face about the fact that it is like a a superhero movie but there are somewhat fantastical elements to this character of the driver i mean the mere fact that he goes kind of unnamed the whole time um there is like a clear villain that he is like going up against uh there is there's this sense of like a uniform that he wears by the end of that right and there's this uh, there's this idea that by the end of it the world has changed in some huge way due to the the act that he has committed it's kind of like that movie we all really want out of dc and marvel of one that is just like small focused on the hero there isn't there isn't the sense of like the world is going to end but like there is the idea that the world is definitely better by the end of it or or worse depending on what you're looking for from your movie right so it's Drive is just like so fantastic for me as somebody that loves superhero movies to go back and watch. And I feel like it's a different movie for us, somebody else, right? And like that's what I really kind of love about it is like talking to other people about what they get out of it. Yeah, for me, I was reminded of like old school westerns. Like you think mm -hmm. about the Man with No Name trilogy, Good, Bad, and the Ugly, few dollars more, fistful of dollars. That's not yeah. the right order at all. But, you know, like he has no name and he comes in and he is just a representation of good in the world. Uh, like we talked about Dumb and Dumber and how they are, you know, uh, personifications of stupidity. The driver right. is a personification of good, even though he kind of exists in a moral gray zone with the fact that he does drive for people committing crimes. At the end of the day, he is karmically like leaning towards good. So all he's of lawful. his actions, yeah, he's lawful, and that's right. yeah to use D and D terms, yeah. So to watch it, and I'm really it was it was great to see. No, he's not carrying this woman's groceries in because he's afraid she saw something or because he wants to sleep with her. Like, it's one of those situations where it's like, no, he's just a nice guy. He's not <laughs> trying to do it. And the fact that it eventually leads to that, like, that's him in a weird way giving up that part of him that is nothing but good and nothing but noble intentions. And, right. like, that's what leads to his downfall and what makes it so that he has to try and fight back to get to that status quo again because he let a little bit seep in like it was such a cerebral film for me that mm -hmm. i didn't expect it at all and i absolutely loved it but i understand the superhero thing because he got that scorpion jacket on <laughs> and if that's that's a superhero outfit and he got well, the and leather little... gloves and yeah there's like a there's like a style to it like there's this there's this uh, sense that it is not the real world as much as it is the real world you know and so once you're in that kind of like fantasy realm for me like you you start to wonder where the line is for these characters and so the other beautiful thing that that drive really does is it really defines where those lines are like you do see him get hurt you do see other people around him suffer for the choices that he's making things like that right so like in a weird way like it's kind of um it comes in and just does what movies like Kick-Ass purport to do, right? Or like even to this point like Kingsman, right? Like we've talked in the past about how those movies kind of as, – as entertaining as they may be, they still kind of irk us in some weird way because they're they're clearly edgy for the sake of edgy in a lot of scenes. You know, we even called out some of uh, some of Scott Pilgrim for that too, right? right? Like like pushing these like these jokes or these, these narratives because it's just cool and not for any like real <laughs> – like there's no there's no meat on the bone of that of those movies in some places right whereas like all the way with drive it always feels like these things are just these things are happening with purpose with reason and like you said there's like a there's like a cerebral element to every every moment in that movie yeah it was awesome and i think the other since you brought up something like kingsman 
the violence while being sort of over the top in drive never really took me out of it because it's not like he was dealing with kind people. It's not like, <laughs> Oh, we're attacking you with flower guns. Right. Yeah. And they'll, yeah. and they'll make you fall in love with us. And then there'll be no, no, like, it makes sense that these drug dealers and mafia men that he is gets embroiled with would like use lethal force right. and that lethal force would have to be the only thing that he can resort to in order to get what he needs from them to finish this situation. And, well, also and it's that beautiful thing of the hero that's also capable of such violence and tries so hard to not use it. And like, I love that trope. I mean, like we joked about the rundown earlier, but it's that wonderful moment in at the in the third act of the rundown when they're like, oh, he doesn't like guns. And then he like fucking like takes that dude out from 20 faces with the <laughs> it's like I never said I was it wasn't good with him. I don't <laughs> like him doesn't mean I don't know how to use him. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I love that so yeah, much. It's uh, yeah, it's fantastic. And I would also be remiss if I didn't talk about just Al Brooks, Albert Brooks in that film, mm -hmm. as also this, he's the villain. Like, he's sort of the villain of the piece, but, like... Sort of, yes. Yeah, <laughs> well, I feel like he's justified in almost all of his actions. Like, well, it's, he's the villain with a he's a, he's with a clear reason. I won't even say good reason, yeah. but he clearly has a reason for again everything that he does. He doesn't just do things just because he's the bad guy, right? And right. it's and it's a sort of weird thing where like the driver can look at Albert Brooks and see like this is where I could go if I'm not constantly trying to put good out into the world <laughs> because. <laughs> Like there's a there's a, a deleted scene where he deals with his neighbor harassing the, the his the, Albert Brooks beats up his neighbor because he assaults his wife or girlfriend, which like like that's a cerebral thing. Like I read about it and I'm like that that totally tracks with his character because mm -hmm. he is he is uh, chaotic. If the driver is lawful, then he is chaotic. Right. But they're but they're both kind of working towards like good goals like trying to make the world a better place just going about it through different methods or, or yeah or, or the other thing is the, the, the other we don't have to keep focusing on the D&D &D shit but the other thing is is like whereas like the driver is lawful good he is lawful evil like he he, he believes in a, a an order to things and he sees that like there's a way in which people should be treated but also like like to his to his <laughs> All to his goal of power and money, right? Like, like there, there is a, there is a sense that like he knows how the world should work, so that is what he sticks to, and it is in that that you can understand why he does the things that he does, because it, it, in order to fit his worldview, he does A, B, and C. And the thing with the driver is like he is constantly questioning himself that whole time if he is not just doing the same thing. Like that's that's the question of the whole movie, right? Is he just becoming this person or is he becoming something better? And like it's it, it yeah, man. It it plays with you the whole time. Really, really good movie. Glad I checked it out. Can't believe it took me this long to watch it, honestly. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I don't even know why it didn't happen. Like, love everybody who's in it. I wasn't one of those people who thought it was gonna be like Fast and Furious. Like I understood that it was probably going to be more cerebral. From mm -hmm. the from the trailers that I saw, I just I it just didn't work out for me. I mean, 2011 was a weird year for me. Like yeah, looking yeah. at it, like as I have, like it put me back into the um, the mindset of 2011 as well. And for every X Men First Class, and like now every movie is affected by my viewing of X Men First Class in a small stupid way. But <laughs> I know that like I missed Drive. And it's also crazy to think that Crazy Stupid Love is the same year as Drive. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it was the time when we were just, and we still are in love with him, but like when Ryan Glossling was really kind of hitting that stride of just everybody loves him. You know, man, woman, anything in between. You are either, you cannot deny the, the fucking charm of this motherfucker, right? Um, but like, you know, we, we shouldn't also, you know, we'd be remiss to not mention like the writer director of this one is, is I'm never going to say his last name. Right. But, but Nicholas Winding, uh, Reffin, 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 Reffin. But he's like, you know, he's the guy that ends up giving us, um, uh, only God forgives later with, with Ryan Gosling again, but also neon demon, but he's also the guy Love that gave it. Yeah. But he's, he's a <laughs> man. I, 
<laughs> love <laughs> we might it. have to do some more talking about this dude eventually. But because um, I, I also love his movies, and there is just something to be said about all of them. But the big one for me with him that people like tend to forget is that he's the guy that's behind um, Bronson, which is the huge breakout for Tom Hardy, which is the the semi true like semi autobi semi autobiographical semi biographical like like movie about uh, this prisoner in Australia, I believe it's Australia, who's like infamous as the most violent prisoner of all time um and and tom hardy plays the role and and it's really kind of that movie where a lot of people really kind of take notice of hardy for the first time um anybody that talks about like like you know what he's become now like seems to fail to remember like where we got him from like people talk about him being like this like mumbly gruff actor and it's just like well considering that's the thing that kind of put him on the map for everybody he's he, he was always that right <laughs> Which is why Legend is so good. Mm -hmm. If you get a chance, it's not the cool Tom Cruise movie where his not teeth are still messed up and Mia Sarah's there and freaking Tim Curry with big old horns. God, <laughs> that's a good movie. Um, but Legend, uh, based on the 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 uh, mob twins from Britain, I cannot remember their name. But it's him and Shia LaBeouf, right? That's no, it's brothers. him and himself. Oh, <laughs> he plays that both twins. Legend. Because he's also in the one with Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf. Where, they're, wow, where, they're which... the, um, where they're both the mob kids from like the 19th. But that's America, right? Yeah, that's an American film. No. Legend oh, was... I remember Legend now. Yeah. <laughs> Legend's the one that famously put the three-star review on the uh, on the poster for them, right? Between the two of them. So it looked like it was a five-star review. Yep. It was brilliant. <laughs> it was God. brilliant. Uh, but right. also, it's I think of Legend as that movie that like kept being delayed. And then I only saw it because I was in Boston and saw that it was playing. Nice. <laughs> and I'm like, Man. yeah, I wanted to see that movie. How is it out now? Uh, I think I saw that with uh, Manchester by the Sea. <laughs> oh, and, man. Uh, the, the, oh, God, the guy who, Eddie Redman, the, okay. the one where he realizes that he's transgender. I cannot remember the name of that film. It's super good. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like or was it with Chirac it was a weird day like I did I, I, I saw like movies that like I really want to see these movies and they're all weirdly playing at this Boston AMC and I'm in Boston today so I just like made a day of it and saw Legend and two other films and it was either Chirac the Eddie Redman one with Alicia Vikander not Alicia Vikander the one who played Laura Croft in Tomb Raider remake can't think of her name oh either. yeah um, the, the younger actress there yeah yeah I, I gotta i gotta look at the names of those i want to i want to share it and i want to try to figure it out but like that's a good movie if we're talking about that but i gotta check out bronson because i do love i love reference work i mean neon demon is what really made me realize who he was yeah. and that's more keanu reeves so like check it out if you if you're stuck at home and you probably are and you have amazon prime neon demon is on it also watch the dressmaker Cause that's a great Amazon Prime original film. That's just awesome. Have you seen The Dressmaker? No. Oh, see, you watch The Dressmaker. <laughs> Fantastic. So good. Um, yeah, that like those. Uh, also, and th this could go to a much bigger thing, but just I want to talk about it because I rewatched them, and both of the experiences with them were strange, in a good way. Uh, okay. we've, the, the Decker family, I don't know if I've brought it up before, but officially we're trying to get through the entire Marvel cinematic universe before the end of 2020 <laughs> nice. and we have it beautifully set out. Like we have it all planned out. It's mostly Saturdays, a couple of Sundays, uh, for like lighter fare, lighter fare is a relative term, but you know, like kind of lighter fare. And we finally got to Avengers. Avengers was the movie that we watched on Saturday and I had never watched Avengers start to finish since that first time I saw it in theater. Oh, man. So it was very interesting to rewatch it and for moments in that to suddenly make moments that infuriated me about Endgame pretty all right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh, okay, that makes sense now. I apologize for my anger for how things happened in Endgame. Uh, but also, like, I'm glad that Joss Whedon didn't do any other Avengers movies. Did he yeah. do Age of Ultron, or is that someone else? Um, I think he might have been on. It might have been one of those times where he was in. Let's just, I mean, let's go to the tape. Yeah. Um, I am gonna say that yes, he did. Um, but let's let's double check that. 
because I mean, I'm not un disappointed that that's one of his only films because the Joss Whedon-ness of that film is kind of heavily on display and it was the moments I didn't love in the film <laughs> if I'm allowed uh, yeah, to say he does. that he, he does do so Age he does do Age of Ultron alright well Age of Ultron I mean, based on my memory again that's one that I've only seen the one time that has a lot more moments that really work for me um I mean, Joss Whedon, I'll, I'll give him credit. He gets the human side of things really good, but the, his action stuff just feels gratuitous. Like, there were moments in Avengers where I'm like, I get what's happening here. We can move on. I like when they're all talking. Like, that scene in the lab when it's Tony, Bruce, and Steve talking about why are we here now? Why would S.H.I.E.L.D. bring us in for this? Why weren't we talking in the well, conversation before? I mean, that's and that's the stuff that Whedon is like known for. Yeah. You got to remember, like he was on TV, so he didn't really have the opportunity to do a lot of action heavy right. stuff. And that, but that's the thing yeah. is that it's it sucks that because the human stuff that he does is really really good, and they find and they find movies where you can put that stuff on display. I mean, like Black Panther has a beautiful balance between action and humanity. Mm -hmm. In a way that, like, Avengers just doesn't have that. And I feel like it well, comes eventually. <laughs> yeah, man, but yeah. you're talking about, you're putting Ryan Coogler up against Jaws Whedon. Like, Coogler's just, like, yeah, gonna I blow him out of the water. Of course, like, yeah, yeah, Fruitvale yeah. Station was fucking exceptional. Every time <laughs> like, Coogler like, comes like, up, <laughs> I have to bring that up. Yeah, no, it's just one of those situations where it's like, okay, this was definitely a Joss Whedon movie. And mm -hmm. then, you know, because it was a weekend where we did two, I rewatched Iron Man 3, and this is the first time that I've seen Iron Man 3 since I saw it in theaters. Oh, and man, Shane Black. I love That'd Shane Black. Uh, it's a, such a Christmas <laughs> movie, and it's, like, super apparent to me that it's a Christmas movie uh -huh. in this way that, like, I always felt like it was just kind of tacked on at the end, but no, that is 100% a Christmas movie, like, mm -hmm. start to finish, and I and it works beautifully, but also I recognized a lot more humanity in that film. Like, Iron Man 3, in my memory, was just the final scene where he's jumping between armor, and, I, <laughs> and that annoyed me. Because it just feels like a retelling of the ending of Iron Man 2, which I think is the, the weakest part of Iron Man 2, is when it's War Machine and Iron Man fighting all the Hammer, like Justin Hammer yeah, after robots. They, after they break through the, the glass dome there, right? Yeah, and that's like it's just like, the, oh yeah. my god, I get it. There's all these robots. And then like, oh, we just did a bunch of robots again. But no, they didn't just do a bunch of robots again. That scene's actually very well put together. And mm -hmm. it's it's actually, it focuses more on Tony Stark as a human outside of the armor, which is what that whole movie kind of does. Yep. And like, I, I really enjoyed Iron Man 3 a second time. So I want to apologize for any time that I may have cast aspersions on it. That was based on one viewing. And also like viewing them this way, I'm noticing a lot of the themes and the carryover. Like I want to give a big shout out to like, Coulson and Thor have the one of the longest interactions in Thor. So, yeah. like, when he's telling Thor about Jane Foster has been put up at one of our uh, telescopes, we gave her a private plane, we put her, gave her a place to live, very nice paycheck, she is taken care of, it makes sense that they would have that interaction because they know each other. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so like that's one of the things that really pays off in the in the final couple of movies, and especially in the last movie, is that it, it's it's the way that all of this stuff is is brought back up. So like in a lot of ways, the last movie is it feels like there's not much substance to it. Endgame doesn't feel like there's much substance to it because it is so much just a rehash of everything you've seen before. But really like what that is for me is a celebration of all of this stuff because like like you're pointing out like the ways in which the stuff starts to kind of pull forward it comes to a fucking head in those movies that is just so 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 fun and so so good um so i'll be very interested to see how you feel about some of the stuff that that comes up in the in in those movies now 
having it fresh in your head as opposed to like only seeing, you know, like there's references to Avengers all throughout Avengers Endgame. And so like the and... fact that you had only ever seen it in full that one time, I didn't know that before. We would have had a conversation about that because like, like it well... feels almost like you need to study Avengers to, <laughs> uh, to like, to like enjoy Avengers Endgame on the level that I personally did. Not, not to like get it, but like to enjoy it the way that I, I enjoyed it. Well, I will say there was a lot of Captain America. I understood that reference having gone from Endgame to Avengers being like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, I can't be disappointed about this scene that I was disappointed about anymore because it was a clear callback to this bullshit right here. <laughs> that like, and it's not like, it's not just bullshit that like came in one ear and went out another. It's bullshit that Will and I reference all the time well that's just it is you call it bullshit but like this is the stuff that people love yeah. like there's a reason why like people were just like losing their shit at at viewings of endgame and just like laughing and crying at every line and having to go and see it multiple times in order to get everything because like as much as it might be dumb to you to 10 other people it's the reason they fall in love with tony it's the reason that they fall in love with 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 banner and like the weird relationship between him and black widow in that movie that ends up kind of panning out but not panning out later on like it's it's such a weird like introduction for that character yeah i mean they have their real moment to shine in age of ultron in yes. this in a sequence that i will always recall like mm -hmm. that is one of my big moments for Age Voltron. Like I'll, but you don't I'll have that, that moment without what happens in this movie, right? Right, exactly. And I mean, yeah. I knew that I didn't think I, I had never even considered it. I thought that was just something that they were exploring in Age of Voltron. But then to see that, like, no, 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 seeds were sprinkled from the very beginning that these two were were kind of being shipped in script, mm -hmm. and like, is even more disappointing when you consider the trajectory through to Endgame for Banner. Like, yeah, no, really enjoyed it. Really, really worked for me in a lot of strange ways. So I'm excited yep. to continue through. But I knew that Avengers would be a moment where I wanted to check in with you and let <laughs> you know that, like, this is a thing we're doing and here's the outcome of it. And, I have to ask one question. Yeah. Did you guys watch Norton Hulk or no? Oh, of course we did. Okay. I, okay. Uh, the big thing of that is the only one who had ever seen that movie, like proper, was me. <laughs> like my father had watched it in things. My mother had never seen it, and I will say that in Phase One, it is probably the best Marvel film. Like, come it's... at me, bro. It's super good. I can't... It's definitely one of my, my favorite. I like yeah. it more than I like Thor, but I know how much you love Thor. And so. that's the other thing is that, like, I love Thor, but even, like, I would be... It'd be a tough fight between them that I know I would give to Incredible Hulk mm -hmm. just because of the balance between the humanity and the monster on display in that film is gorgeous. And all of the little references, like the way that you feel about Endgame, I felt in Incredible Hulk as a fan of the Hulk for most of my life. Like mm -hmm. I grew up on the Bill Bixby show and I had all of the TV movies and there were like little references to that. The fact that Phil Dumphy from Modern Family is Doc Samson before yeah. he's exposed to gamma radiation is gorgeous. Like there's all this really beautiful stuff on display in incredible Hulk that I had forgotten. And then being reminded like, no, no, this is, it's a shame that this movie is forgotten. But Tim Roth is one of the best Marvel villains to this day for me. Oh, yeah. Like as, as abomination, like he is phenomenal. And it's specifically when he's not abomination, but like even, even in the CGI, as much love as, as like I, I need to give to Ruffalo eventually for, for the CGI work that he does as, as the Hulk, like it, it starts in this movie. It started like, yeah. yeah. But it also like, we were discussing the fact that it's not Ed Norton in Avengers and I'm weirdly okay with it because even though it's supposed to be the same universe, like we have that uh, confirmed by references to Blonsky in universe and other stuff like that. Tony Stark shows up in one of yeah, the exactly. end credit scenes. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's one of those situations. And also Thunderbolt Ross is right. still Thunderbolt Ross, Ross. Right. Um, which beautiful stuff. Uh, 
it like Bruce Banner is such a different person from where we saw him in Incredible Hulk to mm-hmm. Avengers that like it's almost good that they changed the actor to like <laughs> give people that visual like he is not the same person you saw four movies ago. I mean, you know why it's a different actor, right? I do know why. Yes, I guess because Norton's, Norton's like an apparently Norton is famously like, difficult to work with. <laughs> Specifically, like he kept apparently rewriting the script on Louis Leterrier. Like he's just like, yeah, I, yeah, I made it. I, I but did my Louis own Leterrier loved it. The people who didn't love it was the studio. <laughs> Louis Leterrier was like, yeah, go for it. I love it. I love working with you because they're both like weird geniuses, Louis yeah. Leterrier and Norton. So like, it makes sense that the two of them get into a room and they just start geeking out about how to make the greatest Hulk movie ever. And you look at and the first example of that is that Louis Leterrier was like, if you want me to, I will direct Captain America. And people were like, no, 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 we don't need that. <laughs> he's like, are you sure? Because, like, this script, I want to direct. And they're like, no, we're okay. What? Well, we thought Norton did that one, too. And then it's just, like, Robert Downey Jr. and a bunch of Edward Nortons when we do Avengers. <laughs> I'd love it. No, we'll recast everybody for Avengers. But, like, all of them prior to Avengers are just Ed Norton. Oh, man. Um, but, yeah, it's really good. I'm really glad that we're doing it, and it has been – it's been an experience, uh, and I'm very I'm, – I'm, you know, and, you know, that's a, a silver lining for the current situation, right, is finding those weird, cool things to, like, kind of bond over as a family. But Got to yeah. check in with me again when you do Civil War. Oh, of Avengers course, because I hate Civil War. <laughs> you know I hate Civil War. <laughs> and check hope- in with me. Hopefully my favorite we'll one out up. of all of them. Yeah, you no, crazy that's not true. Winter, Winter Soldier is my favorite. Civil War is the second. So, um, Winter Soldier is good. I'm excited to rewatch it. Thor The Dark World coming up next. And I'm like, I'm excited because I love that movie. I love that but... floating bus scene. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a, I love I, I really do yeah. love Dark World. I think it's such a great like story. But and, I don't, uh, I don't think it, is, uh, I don't, yeah. I don't think it's going to have the same reaction that like Captain America had for people who had never seen Captain America. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it does. I mean, but yeah, so that's, that's been cool. Um, I have one other thing I need to drop in. So anything else from you before I just give a, a quick highlight? I uh, no man. I, I, the Emmys were last night. We didn't talk much about them because they were weird and I'm still processing them. But, uh, but no, other than that, yeah, Emmys what, were last yeah. night, right? Shit's Creek. Weird sweep. Not deserved sweep, but like, you know, we're going to talk about the Emmys next week, right? Let's make that promise right now. Also, hey, did you mean not an undeserved sweep? <laughs> no, definitely they deserve to sweep it. Okay, just just clearing up oh, what okay. you just said. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, Watchmen, uh, fucking great win for yeah, that. Which but, I uh, really yeah, hope then... I can convince my family to watch Watchmen now that it's an Emmy. W- because I've wanted to watch it, and I'll watch it alone, but... I don't know. I also want to finally finish um, the I'm Not Here Mark Ruffalo thing because he won okay. Best Actor for that. And that the first episode was so good. But I watched it with the people and they're like, no, we don't need to keep watching this show. It's kind of depressing. And I'm like, but Mark Ruffalo, he's so good. He's Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's pretty much your argument. Also, okay, so before I get to my little setup, Jenny Agutter in The Avengers because Jenny Agutter is apparently the patron saint of 2020 on the Say Report. Mm-hmm. At least the tail end of it. Where I'm just like, oh look, Jenny Agutter again. What is happening? What have I done? Just wanted to say hi, Jenny Agutter. That's all. <laughs> thanks, Jenny Agutter. Thanks for being. Thanks for being here. Um, but the last thing is, uh, Fire Emblem Warriors. I did start it up, and I friggin' love it. I love it so hard that I'm gonna have to get a copy of Hyrule Warriors <laughs> somehow, some way, because of just how enjoyable Fire Emblem is. And I have uh, to imagine you're online for Hyrule Warriors because that could get real interesting. Yeah, that could be fun, huh? We should look into it. I gotta find a copy of it. And actually, doing the show, I feel better paying the slight markup that I'm seeing on Hyrule Warriors because of how affordably I got Fire Emblem Warriors. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, man. God, it's so good. And I can only imagine that the Hyrule Warriors game is going to be better because there's a real weird... So Fire Emblem, if you've never played Fire Emblem, is, you know, one of the... It's it's like um, 
What's the game? I, XCOM is what jumps to mind, but that's not what I want to want to say. Yeah, it's not quite XCOM, but uh, but the idea Command is and like, Conquer is the word I'm looking for. Um, it's very yes, similar yo. to to com- it's real time. It's RTS, real time strategy. It's it's Stratego. Uh, so <laughs> before every level, you're supposed to like tell the people that you're in control of where you want them to go. Like, mm-hmm. here's your mission. And then, like, tell the people where to go. A very Fire Emblem thing. And then, you know, you play the game and you can switch between them as they arrive at their locations. And I'm right. sure that would be fine if I wanted to play the game like that. But I don't. I want to play as the one character and knock down waves upon waves of people. And then mm. when one of them's in trouble, they're like, I'm in trouble. And I switch over to them. I get them out of trouble. And then I switch back to the character I want to be playing as. And that is much more Hyrule Warriors. I, I can promise you that. That is much more the way to play that game. That you, you don't just, go in expecting to play everybody. You just go in and be like, I want to level up Rudo this time. And, cool. Because that, <laughs> like that, I mean, it, I understand why it's there. I understand that a Fire Emblem game would want to incorporate that. Also, Fire Emblem has this triangle system that mm-hmm. everybody always talks about. Like, it's all about the triangle. You need to know the triangle. And that was a little intimidating as somebody who's like, I know triangles, three of them make the Triforce, if you're courageous, <laughs> wisdomly, and powerful. Um, but the triangle system is brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. Brilliant. Great, what you're I one of them now. It. Fantastic. <laughs> because it's just Pokemon, except instead of water beats fire, fire beats grass, and grass beats water, it's swords beat axes axes beat spears spears beat swords mm-hmm. like it's super easy like it's not something crazy it's just well the sword's gonna be better than an axe because the sword's faster than an axe and an axe is gonna be better than a spear because it's more powerful than a spear and a spear is more powerful than a sword because they got distance on you well and it's funny because you mentioned pokemon and actually pokemon's has gotten as far as i'm concerned fucking out of hand like, yeah. because you know there's so many different types that are better than this one but weak to that one but also kind of so so with this one and like there it's it is unmanageable in pokemon but fire emblem just sticks to it yep. just sticks to the three and also i'm very able to to beat everything with my sword carrying character <laughs> <laughs> I have, also, the triangle is kind of bullshit. <laughs> well, like it's, I'm sure it's a bigger deal in our, in the RTS game, where it's mm-hmm. like, okay, so I have a troop who who uses axes, a troop who uses swords, and a troop that uses spears. I'm gonna send the spear people to go fight the sword people, <laughs> like right. when it's like that. But when it's not real time, and I'm just running around and I'm just smashing the attack button, like mm-hmm. damage is damage. That, right that's how that works yeah 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 exactly um, man so i'm very cool. so very very good um i just beat the 13th chapter of 23 so i'll have more to report next week and i will definitely be getting hyrule warriors because if it's half as good as this game and by all accounts it seems like it's better than this game <laughs> um because i don't need to worry about oh your mage who wants to fight is in trouble. And I'm like, well, of course she's in trouble. She should be with me, healing me. Yeah, yeah. But I need yeah. to level up my Pegasus Knight as well. I want to, like, I'm already bonded with my healer. We have an A-plus relationship. Yeah, no, the worst that happens in Hyrule Warriors is that if you're playing two-player, I'll be running around as, like, Ganondorf while, like, Hannah's running around as Link, and it'll always be like, all right, now defeat Ganondorf, and she'll come running at me. And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> different one, different one. No, Link. the one Go with the me. red above his name, the red-named yeah. Ganondorf. <laughs> yeah, like, that's the worst that we've seen that. No. Yeah. I'm excited, man. I'm super happy that you're playing this. Yeah. I can't wait to see what we can do with Hyrule Warriors. Cool, I'm excited. Uh, but, yeah, so I think that's the last thing. I think I covered everything. I had a lot I wanted to talk about. I got to address a lot of it. So I feel good. Real, real good. Uh, again, anything last for you before we send her over to Will? No, oh, let's let's wrap this one up. All right. So if you would like to talk about Super Mario Brothers re-release conspiracies with Siegen, he is always available on Twitter at Siege vs. The World. And if you want to try and keep up with Dev and his Marvel rewatch, like hit him up at Devin D. Decker and, uh, and find out what's going on in, with that. All right. So until next time, let's throw it to the guy who knows that I have read in my ledger and that I just want to wipe it out. Will, take us home. Thank you for listening to the Say Report with your host, Devin Decker and Seaton Serwick. 
Please follow the guys on Twitter and Facebook by searching for The Say Report. And you can always subscribe on your podcast channel so this is delivered straight to you and you can enjoy it every week. With apologies to your mother, we'll see you next time.